Hola, comadres. Welcome to another episode of Comadreando. I'm your host, Marcy. And today we have an awesome guest, my friend, Ami. And I'm going to let her introduce herself. Who are you? Hi, guys. I'm Amy Vega, uh, born and raised New Yorker in Washington Heights. And I am what they call a celebrity manicurist. I've been doing nails both on set and with clients for the last 10 years, believe it or not. Yeah, it's been 10 years since I started. And I am known for my super detailed nail art, also my art outside of nails, but nails is basically my strong suit. Yes. So um, I met Amy. Well, first of all, I was stalking her on social media. And then we found out that we have a friend in common. Mm -hmm. And through that friend, we started going to events together. And then we found out we're both artsy-fartsy people. And she's literally my go-to to every art event that I attend because we just really enjoy it together. And also, we're, like, into Frida Kahlo and... Um, just art in general, Museum. Yeah, what is the other one? Um, Jean-Michel Basquiat and all these other artists. So, yeah, she's my go-to. And she's also a bad money lover, which I am as well. Yeah. Um, so today's topic is dating stories, uh, which one we've covered on the show before. But I feel like since Ami is my day one, we always get into these uh, little <laughs> regaling each other with um our different um dating stories and like horror stories and stuff like that i feel like i wanted to do an episode on that um uh i always love talking to Ami because she always gives me like neutral advice and will check me when i am bugging the freak out yes i will <laughs> it's the libra in me i have to see both sides of the situation and be as like i guess clear-headed and neutral and not favor you because I feel like as a friend you should be yes, that way. I agree. Like, I don't want to be friends with a chick who's not going to tell me that I look stupid in an outfit or yes. maybe my hair just isn't sitting right. And I want you to tell me. I want you to look out for me. So I'm going to do that for you, obviously. Yeah, so we can we can talk to each other when we're having our, our moments and like coach each other through. Okay, so before we get into the episode, uh, what is your current relationship status? I am surprisingly involved um, for the last two years. It It's a weird situation because we always joke about how while the world is like burning and falling apart, here's our love story <laughs> of how we got together during the whole panini. But um, yeah, I've been with my boyfriend for, I, we just celebrated meeting two years ago in February, but we, I guess, like a teenager saying this, we became official in September of 2020. So September after the Panini. Wow, wait, you guys got together right before we shut down the world. Yeah, we literally were going on dates. And then he got COVID in like March. And oh I didn't God. see him for like a whole month because he got it really bad. I remember that. Mm -hmm. Right? I was doing the monologues at the beginning of March, yeah, right? I think that's the last event that I went to before everything OMG. went to mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, man. So, wait. How did you guys meet? Dating app. Dating app? Yeah. So, you swiped, right? Yeah. He'll tell the story differently. I'm sure if he's hearing this right now, he's laughing. Because <laughs> he's like, you looked um, How is it that he says? You hit me up. And he has the messages saved. And I'm like, burn them. He's like, I have all the receipts. Yeah. Shots, bro. But, yeah. We met on a dating app, which is the norm. And we were going on such cute dates, and it was so fun. And then, se jodió todo. Like, the pandemic happened, and he had COVID, so I didn't see him for, like, a month. But we were still communicating. Mm -hmm. And then he did the cutest thing, which I think began the kind of, I'm not going to say my interest. I was interested in him, but it kind of, like, solidified. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this dude is serious. So he's like, oh, you know, my boy, he's selling Girl Scout cookies. So I'm like, hello. Yes, I want some tagalongs <laughs> and some Samoas and some of this. And he goes, and I tell him my order. And he's like, all right, I'm going to let him know. And then the next week, he's like, oh, my boy's going to bring it to you around five. I'm like, okay, I'll come down and I'll get it. So I put my mask on. He's like, yeah, he's downstairs. And it's him. And I'm like, oh. But it was so weird because at the same time, it's like a whole, he's very nervous and cautious about 
the people that he cares for. So he's like scared to get me sick, even though mm -hmm. it had already like been good. But it was the beginning; nobody knew anything. Yeah. So we're like sitting in his car with masks, and we're just like, "Hey," it's like awkward and cute. But the fact that he like surprised me, yeah, and wanted to see me, I'm like, "Oh, pero mira este, like how cute." <laughs> and I don't know; it just kind of, you know, they say actions are better than words and. He showed me that, so I was like, okay. Yeah, I totally believe that. I feel like stuff like that, it's like, he didn't have to do that, but he did it. And it's yeah. kind of like, it shows you so much interest on his part. I remember listening to the story um, when we were, because guys, when we get together, when Ami was still doing nails, um, when we get together to do nail, when she does my nails, we're always like catching up and doing comadre time via nail art. So um, yeah, like I remember hearing that story and I was like, oh my God, so freaking cute like oh man but um yeah so wait what was it like before you matched with bae like my dating life like dating life before bae oh was, girl i was <laughs> dating in new york sis. <laughs> they weren't lying they didn't have a second family or a third family oh my god um so all right so I, my last serious relationship was with my child's father. We were together for four years. He's very much a narcissist and still is to this day because mm -hmm. co-parenting has not been easy. And in those 10 years, 10 plus years of since, because I, I left him when I was eight months pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, I dated around and I like, dated guys but never anything serious and wait but the baby just to give context um she's 13 yeah she's gonna be 13 this year okay i i dated around but i also had periods where i was just alone mm -hmm. like you don't get a holiday it's just this, here i am single mother i also two years into motherhood left my nine to five to pursue this nail thing which is scary in the beginning mm -hmm. because freelancing is scary you mm -hmm. know it still is but it i didn't really know much of it so i didn't have the mental capacity to think about you know as as, as lonely as i may have been as bedaka as i may have been like <laughs> those needs kind of were put aside because i needed to focus on other things on my child on what i was going to do with my career so i had periods it was like a year or two and I'm like, don't look at me don't talk to me and then i would go on apps and like spend maybe like a week give it a try and I would get turned off really quickly because although there are guys there who are genuine, there's a lot of creeps. Yes. And I'm sure you've heard this from your friends. If you've experienced it, there's a lot of creeps and I don't, like I get ick really yeah. fast. So I'd be like, oh, delete. I know. Delete. Okay. Cancel subscription. I don't, I don't want to bother. But in that time span, I've dated, you know, I've had casual relationships. Mm -hmm. To put it properly, and then I, I've dated guys for you know months, maybe even up to a year, but it never really nothing really solidified. Like, my boyfriend now has met my child, which no man has done before, so mm -hmm. that's like a big thing. And she loves him, um, and he loves her, so I did good in that aspect. Um, but it, it was just like on and, and on and off thing, like meeting guys. And I've seen, I've met guys that kind of terrify me. And also having a child plays a different factor into yes. it. Because um, sometimes people think single mothers are like desperate to find a daddy. And it's mm -hmm. like, my kid has a daddy. He might not be the best, but it'll be in his super And that wasn't, that wasn't how I was looking at it. I was looking for a partner. Like my boyfriend didn't meet KJ for I think like a year. Mm -hmm. like, I, I don't mess around with my kid just bringing people over to meet her so it took a while and she was I wouldn't say she was not receptive to the shoes she's cautious she's a Capricorn they're very cocky mm -hmm. they're very kind of like who the hell are you you know like what do you want yeah but now she loves him um but dating before him was kind of a shit show the last guy I dated it, everything seemed to be going good and I think almost like a year in then suddenly he ghosted me Completely ghosted me, and that's when I kind of like took a break mm -hmm. for like a, a year, and then when I got back on, that's when I met. This is the thing. I don't. 
I want to touch on two things, right? Like, I respect the fact that you don't bring strange men around your child all the time. Like, I know I was on um, I was on El Salon the other day, and we we had an episode Platano and Collard Greens, and the guys were talking about oh, um, you shouldn't wait so long for a man to meet your child. But I'm also like, my child is my treasure. Like, I'm not gonna have every dude that I'm dating, especially if I don't even know if it's gonna be serious coming around my kid. One, Aiden's a very, um, he's a very, he's very innocent in the sense that he doesn't know si la gente tiene malicia. I mean, he knows that if you have bad energy, he's not going to mess mm-hmm. with you, which you know how he is. Yeah. But in the long run, like, I'm just like, I'm not looking for, a, I'm not looking for a father for my kid. He has a dad. I don't need you to be in any parental role at all. Like, yeah. eventually if we're together. If you want to do some things you can but whether i'm requiring it of the person that i'm dating that that's not that's not what we're looking for right i definitely agree with you that you're looking for partnership and then um that whole ghosting thing like people are so freaking weird like dude like why why do that i feel like that's one of the things i'm still working on you know Mm -hmm. that's one of the triggers like abandonment issues um and the fact that somebody does that it just like kind of sends you spiraling in a way especially when it's somebody that supposedly quote-unquote cares about you like how is it that you're not communicating how you're feeling in that moment like let's say you feel like you're gonna hurt that person's feelings but I feel like it's more important to just be clear and tell that person how you feel instead of them thinking it's something wrong with them I think honestly the way I look at it I feel like technology has a big play into that where it gives us accessibility and it gives us an anonymous platform to kind of negate responsibility Mm -hmm. because now it's not, it's like I say with kids and bullying, bullying is done mostly online for kids now. Yeah. I'm there. It was like, I'm going to meet you at three o'clock after school. I'm going to meet you at (laughs) No, now it's like, oh my God, I'm going to put this tweet. I'm going to make this like Snapchat about Fulana. That's why it's more dangerous. And so I feel like even with adults, it's not, oh, I'm going to give you a phone call. Or I'm going to meet you in person and tell you, hey, this is not working out. It's so easy to just block that person on every platform and forget about it. Mm-hmm. You're void of any responsibility because you don't physically have that person in front of you. Mm-hmm. So it's so easy to people be like, eh, block. Don't respond. Because they don't have access to you physically. Mm-hmm. It takes more courage to say something to somebody's face than it does to do it over the phone. Yep. Or not say it, you know? So I think that adds to it. But it, I don't know. It, it's a strange time. For relationships, for dating, especially in a city like New York, especially, you know, now through a pandemic, Mm -hmm. it's a weird time. People, emotionally, I feel like we're kind of all over the place. Yes. And we don't know how to, what's the word I want to say? We don't know how to express that, how to function with those feelings, those Mm -hmm. emotions, Mm -hmm. and how to get them out. Like I always say, everybody needs therapy. Yes. Nowadays, including myself. <laughs> no, but wait, what was that meme that we saw the other day? Um, accountability? That's a big word for Elmo. Mm-hmm. Nobody has to think of accountability. You're not for anything. Oh my God. But and again, it's technology. Uh, I feel like people hide behind their phones, they hide behind their computers in a lot of aspects. Mm-hmm. Not just like dating, but also you think about online representation, social media, yep. and and influencers do not you curate who you are mm-hmm. so you can create this wall of i'm fulana here and then in real life you're this yeah so i don't know it just creates this gap of, of accountability and responsibility when it comes to interacting with other humans that's kind of made something like dating that's pretty intimate and mm-hmm. weird like even for our first date which we joke about because he showed up dressed so nice and i look like a drug dealer <laughs> But our first date was in a coffee shop because I feel like when you meet online, especially fancy dinners and stuff, that's a very intimate thing. You're sitting with a person for hours. You're having this meal. You know, you're all dressed up. It's like, I want to get to know you. And grabbing a coffee and going is much easier than saying, oh, can we get the check, please? And can you pack this to go? So my favorite thing is like, let's meet in a coffee shop. Let's just chit chat and talk and see that 
like personal physical connection in mm-hmm. person because online again you could be totally like have this personality that's not you because you're not being held accountable for your words you can put whatever you want but it's gonna show in, in who you are like i'm a pretty awkward person yeah i'm introverted um you know media rarita, so it's like <laughs> you're not gonna get that through me typing or even yeah. me on the phone yeah but when there's eye contact involved there's you know many reasons and everything it's different and that's just kind of what the world has come to we, we, we have two personalities two lives yeah online and in person I was gonna say that I remember you told me about that coffee date at the beginning I was like mm, you got dressed to go have coffee with somebody but like it's it you don't drink so it's like what are you gonna do go for drinks you don't really drink yeah. so it's like mm. although we did have a really cute date um before the world went to poop uh we went to the museum of sex for that um you went to it the thing yeah. I have now and then after what is it called carnival yeah something like something that, like that. And then afterwards, we found this cute speakeasy in a church. Mm-hmm. Most beautiful. Oh, tell me about that, yeah. Oh, it's so gorgeous. I want to go back. I tell them all the time I want to go back. And like that being, you know, where was see, But I had mm-hmm. a drink. And it was just nice. It mm-hmm. was, you know, we were in this little table on the side. It was super intimate. The place is beautiful. Like, even the confession rooms are like rooms that you can, you know, reserve yeah. to like have your drinks in there. It was gorgeous. So it's like a drink once in a while. But for the first day, like, yo no quiero de borracha. I don't want to be in a movie theater yelling or trying to, like, watch the movie and talk to you. So coffee seems like the thing to do. Yeah. But it's like he shows up and he was so handsome and I'm literally in sweats, kicks, hoodie. You're like, I literally came from I put my lipstick, though. I have my signature red. Your signature red lip. Mm. But I, was, I, was, I don't know. I was comfortable. And I had told him how. The last Wait, what was he wearing on the first date? He, you know, he had, like, jeans and, like, a sweater. Like, he was nice. And, but it was, like, a nice sweater. Yeah, like, he looked nice. Aww. Compared to, like, me. Not that I look... Tampoco no era que yo estaba uh, sis, she's talking crap, guys, but, like, she's, it's not like... It's sweats. She's right next to me in, like, a sweatshirt and, like, sweatpants and sweat. shit. And she looks... That's my Mom, like, one. bye. That's, that's what I'm in 90% of the time. <laughs> in the winter time. It was February. <laughs> but, um... What you call it? Yeah, it was. It was just you know. I just wanted to like see him in person and be mm-hmm. like, let's actually talk. And he told me that he felt like I was guarded, but it's like, yeah, I just met you. My mom said, don't talk to strangers. <laughs> um, but I feel like it's a Libra thing. Like you're kind of guarded. Because we have first. to weigh out. You know, our scales. We're like, okay, is it gonna go left? Is it gonna go right? Like no, but that's how you guys are. Like I remember at first when we first met, like you were just kind of like. Just like media seca. And no, no, and it wasn't even like dry. It's but that's normal because like I get scared when people are like too like sabroso yes. when they just met you and you're just like yeah, that's a turn off. Like I don't know if I even like you. Like why are you? The people were like, oh my god, bestie, sis. I'm like, don't touch me. It's like, I don't know you. <laughs> I'm very reserved in that sense when I meet anybody, and I, I, you know, I don't want to say I have resting bitch face, but I do. We both could. I, <laughs> I, like to blame, I, I like to blame it on my bells. I'll be like, no, nah, bitch, half my face don't work. That's why I don't smile. So, <laughs> why? It's not because I don't like you. I don't like you, bitch. Yeah, so, you know. But it's it's been fun. At least, you know, the last yeah. two years. That's good. Um, all right, so after your child's dad... What kind of work did you do to get ready to be in the relationship? I know, I mean, it's good that you gave yourself time because, like, I feel like a lot of people are so quick, like, they get in that fear mode that we were talking about earlier, and they're like, oh, my God, I'm going to be alone for the rest of my life. And they just, like, jump into relationships without fully heeding or, like, looking at what they didn't like or what they did like and kind of really analyzing it and sitting with it for a little while and figuring out, what it is they want to do, you know, or how, or how they want to help themselves mm-hmm. be better. So what was it, what was kind of, kind of the things that you did to like help yourself? I mean, therapy is part of it. I, it wasn't a big part because I, I don't really, I didn't really take the time to talk to my therapist about relationships necessarily. Mm-hmm. It was like other things. Um, but I will say that age, like, I'm just going to be 40 this year. 
And with that comes a lot of life experience and hopefully lessons because yes, you can be 60 and not learn anything in life. Yeah. But taking the time to just self-reflect because something that we lack, and I say we as in everybody, is self-reflection. Because I am far from perfect. I have my goods. I have my bad. And I think acknowledging that and making an effort, like my man can tell you, our relationship has been good. Like any relationship, we've had issues here and mm -hmm. there. Nothing that I would say is like astronomical. Mm -hmm. This is the healthiest relationship I've been in. But it, it's really... The thing for me is making a conscious effort, taking from every experience I've had with men and taking the good and the bad and learning from mm -hmm. them. So when I do get to a point that I meet somebody that I'm comfortable with. Sorry, guys, you know we're recording in New York City, so. <laughs> it would be New York City without the background. Something's noise. always going down. Um, taking the time to acknowledge those things and learn from them has really helped. And I tell him all the time, you know, I'm like, I'm learning, even through the process of dating him. Mm -hmm. But the things that I've taken from past experience has helped me. Because I'll be honest. I, I'm the type of person that I'm very guarded with my heart because of what I've been through. Mm -hmm. It was traumatic. And so I'm quick to run. I'm quick to be like, oh, no me gusta esto. He's going to hurt me. I'd rather be alone. Because that's what I've been used to for a decade. That's us. We always got the running shoes in the back. And so, like, now with him, I make the effort to be like, no, things have to be communicated. Things have to be resolved. So if I'm feeling a type of way, I, I express it to him, always with respect. Mm -hmm. Because yo no soy una de que está goceando, to be yelling, to be pointing fingers, and, and getting and loud, and rah, rah, rah. Mm -hmm. No, we're two grown adults. In our big age, we should not be doing any of that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, communicating how I feel. I definitely have an anxious attachment uh, style. He's avoidant, so he's a bit more reserved. He sits in his thoughts for a while before he talks, and I'm like, I want to talk about it. Like, bye now. I'm a leader. I need balance. <laughs> like, I need my skills to be even. But communication, communication. And so all these years before having met him, just learning from all my experiences and also my self-awareness. I think that's the biggest thing. Being like, pendeja, look, you do this. You shouldn't do this all mm -hmm. the time. You should kind of um, face certain demons and kind of, you know, get through certain things that have made past uh, attempts at relationships fail, mm -hmm. you know? So I, I guess the biggest takeaway is just kind of like self-awareness and being clear of who I am, mm -hmm. the good and the bad, especially the bad, so that when I go into this relationship, I don't sabotage which I've done before. Um, Self-sabotage is a big thing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of that. I, I feel like it's so easy to like point a finger and blame somebody else every time, you know? Mm -hmm. and instead of like taking accountability and really like sitting with yourself and being like, hmm, what was it I could have done differently? Yeah. You know? And it sucks because you're like, God, man. You know, it's like, I've had moments that I sit with myself and I'm like, yeah, that was not the best choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Without even you telling me or anybody else telling me. I'm just like, you know, reflecting back to the situations. And I'm like, mm, yeah. It's easier to be the victim than the villain. Yes. So a lot of times we'll be like, I know because he looked at me sideways wrong. Or <laughs> he held his phone in his hand for too long. So that's why. No. It's like, mm, is, was that really? <laughs> and it's, it's helped great because, you know, now we're at a point. The other night, we we went out to see Spider-Man, finally. Yeah. And afterwards, we, get, we went to get a bite, and we were just kind of, like, talking the whole way home. And when we got home. And it was nice, because we were just, like, talking, you know, shooting the shit, but mm -hmm. also talking about things in our relationship and just being really honest and vulnerable with each other. And I'm like, oh, my crap, Amy, like, look at you. Being vulnerable. Being vulnerable and actually communicating with your partner and stuff. And yeah. So it's great, but it's been a long road to get here. And then opening yourself up to let yourself be vulnerable, because that's the mm -hmm. thing. Like me and you are famous for like building that freaking brick wall that you have to scale with like what is it, the cleats? <laughs> because <laughs> climbing climbing shoes. People don't understand the trauma that comes with you know that word trauma is so 
popular now. Yeah. Um, with generations changing in how they express themselves and how they want to be valued and the boundaries that they set. Trauma is a big word. And we talk about generational trauma, but people don't realize how much trauma comes from a relationship. Mm -hmm. Especially one that you know doesn't end in a good way and also has a lot of negative aspects, whether it's domestic abuse, mental abuse, mm -hmm. physical abuse, whatever it may be. That sits with you and it plays a part in how you follow up afterwards because it's like here I am with this man who cares about me but those little thoughts of like you know being with a narcissist like oh is he doing this or he said that is he being sarcastic mm -hmm. you know and having to check that like no 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 that's he's him he's not that person from the past Dude. so dealing with that trauma and kind of working through it is really important because that's upset it was I thought I was going to be 13. Mm -hmm. It was a long time ago. Yeah. And still elements of that kind of still sit. <sighs> um, yeah, so you know I was with a narcissist before. Um, and just like uh, your your child's daughter. Son, I mean, daughter, son. Your child's dad. Um, he hasn't changed and he doesn't recognize the fact that he's the problem. Mm -hmm. You know? Because they're not going to as, as a narcissist. They're not. It's so easy. Um, I was dealing with a narcissist the other day, which I talked to you about. Um, not in a relationship, but in another uh, aspect. But it's so easy for them when they feel like they're being outed to like create a smear campaign, right? Against mm -hmm. whoever is like, you know, because narcissists present this beautiful like facade, you know, and it's a mask and, and hiding the ugly from inside. So... Once they feel like that mask is being taken away, that they, they're only re they resort to attacking, right? Yeah, they panic and it's like, if I'm gonna go down, you're gonna go down with me. Which is nuts. I'm mm -hmm. I'm just like, you know, but unlearning that kind of behavior, like w the one we had to adapt to be able to defend ourselves against that, it has been a lot of work. And mm -hmm. and the fact that, you know, another thing that I had to learn was like learning to accept the apology I never got. Mm. Right? Because he... That you're still waiting for. I'm not waiting for it anymore. I know he's never going to apologize, and I'm okay with yeah. that. And if he does one day, cool. And I, I don't know if he listens to the show or not. Peace be with him. But, um, yeah, no, being okay with the apology that I'm most likely never going to get. Mm -hmm. I'm being okay with that. You know, because at the end of the day, like, you know you're doing the work to heal yourself and to be a better yourself mm -hmm. and be, you know, uh, your highest self and be a better human being in general for your daughter and for the relationship you're in right now and for yourself. So it's like, you know, dealing with people like that is just kind of like, and then unlearning the trauma, that's another thing. Like, it's so much work. It's tiring. It's really tiring. It's exhausting. Yeah. It's, it's you know, I don't have it. It's, it's not perfect yet, but I've worked and grown a lot. And I'm in a good space um, in my relationship, but it, it's a constant effort of kind of checking myself. Mm -hmm. Being like, is this something that you honestly should be upset or concerned about, or is this like your past trauma kind of messing with you? So just always making a conscious effort to, like, when you're in a relationship, you have to want to be in a relationship and yes. you want to make it work. You can't just like be in it, be like, hey, whatever, mm -hmm. days pass by. No, there's you. There's a whole other human being that you have to consider, and they have to consider you. So you have to consciously make an effort. So it's work. Um, yeah, what was it? Um, the Barber episode, I don't know if you got to listen to it yet. Um, he wrote a book about relationships and, um, he said that it's a relationship, right? You have to build, right? So mm -hmm. there, there's like so many pieces that go into it. It's not just like existing together. It's like, you have to put a conscious effort into in the things that you do and how you respond and who that person is and meeting them where they're at. Cause the thing is like, you can't. You can't fall in love with, like, the people that I do, but you can't really fall in love with potential or who yeah. you think this person's going to be. You have to meet them where they're at. Mm -hmm. And I and I tell this to people all the time, especially young girls. I'm, I'm just like, you can't go into it thinking that this is going to be your project and that you're going to fix this person to be who you want them to be. Somebody has said a long time ago, people show you who they are for free. Mm -hmm. They literally do. So it's like that idea of like, oh, no, but maybe if he... 
and maybe if he or maybe if I help him this and that no they're gonna show you you know like I saw that early on with my man like just the things he has done for me Mm -hmm. I'm like first of all nobody's ever done this for me just the consideration Mm -hmm. and the thought that he puts into even the smallest thing yeah you know um that mattered to me the the level of respect like one thing you know I'm going to be very open right now and say that I had things happen. I had something happen to me in my childhood that has affected my trust with like bringing a man into my household, especially having a a daughter. So I've been very cautious about that. I remember one time I was on a dating app and this dude was like, you know, I'm open about it. It's like, look, I have a kid. I'm not going to lie about it. He's like, oh yeah, maybe we can go to the park and you can bring your kid. And I was like, I haven't even met you. Slow, slow, automatically red flag. I said this on the Why do you want to be my kid? I, I said this before. I don't know if it's buttering me up, like, oh, the single mom. Like, I should, no, no, no. no, no. no, no. You me. You're getting to know me. You don't need to know my kid. So, like, one time we had gone, actually, with Nina, we went to this, like, pumpkin thing. Uh, I think it happened either early 2021 or late 2020. And we took a photo, and my daughter standing next to him. And we're all kind of like, you know, coming into the photo. And he put his arms behind, like, his back. He didn't, like, touch her. Like, mm-hmm. he's so res- he was so respectful mm-hmm. of her space, her autonomy, not trying to be over-friendly and huggy and mm-hmm. stuff. And I was just like, wow. You know, like, this is what it's like. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, seeing just, I pay attention. To, you know, I'm an artist. I pay attention to the details, mm-hmm. you know. So little things like that kind of made me fall more and more in love with him because it's like, not only do you have to respect You're telling me the picture and you're saying what picture it is and I'm like picturing it and I remember that his hands were behind his back. Yeah. Not that I found it odd or anything. It's just kind of like, it was just like a pose. It just stuck out in my brain right now. Mm -hmm. And even like something, like one time he got to the house when my mom was visiting and she went up to him, she gave him a hug, which I think was the first hug she's ever given him. Mm -hmm. But, I, you know, seeing her so comfortable with him, I was just like, oh, like. Yeah, and your yeah. mom is not, is not, is not somebody that. No, not my mom. Like, my mom loves him. It was um, KJ. Oh. KJ hugged him. They had, I don't think they had ever hugged, you know? Oh. Because he's just so, like, respectful. respectful. And he understands what that means to me. Because I tell my, my kid all the time, you know I turn into mama bear if I need to. Like, <laughs> I'm a crazy. Like, I rip somebody's throat out. Yeah, so, like, little things like that, just paying attention to the effort that is put into things that people overlook, Mm -hmm. you know? Because I remember one time on a dating app, this guy was like, oh, are you going to have time for me? Because, you know, I know you're a single mother, but, like, are you going to have to be like, oh, I got to cancel that because I got to go get my kid. And I'm like, excuse me? (laughs) Pump your brakes, sir. You know I birthed this human? I made this human in my belly for nine months. And I'm supposed to be like, you kid, I'm gonna go on a date with Fulano. Pick your fuck them kids. I was like, what? <laughs> what? Yo. You know, and it's like with my man, it's been the opposite. He's actually praised me for the balance that I've created because I'm gonna be honest, like, yes, I am a mother first and foremost, but and I I even tell my mother this, you still have to pour into yourself because women especially oh my God, as mothers yes. we lose our identity the second we pop a kid out. No, ja, it's just your child. No, no, no. I'm still living, bro. I still got a couple of years. And I'm you out. have needs, man. Yeah, so it's like I want the date nights. But then I also want like Friday we're gonna go see that movie with the little girl that turns into a panda, red panda. It's a movie. She told me she wants to see it. I'm like, okay, bet, let's Is go. Is it like a Disney? It's like a Disney Pixar movie, yeah. Okay. So it's like having those moments with her, but also I'm allowed to pour into myself and yes. go out with my man. And, you know, I went on vacation with him uh, last summer. We went to Puerto Rico for five days. It was fun, like for his birthday. Doing Having that balance of like, yes, I'm still going to be a present mother, but I'm also going to be a present girlfriend, partner, and do things, you know, with my man. It's not just about, that's it, I'm a mother. Yeah. I can't do anything else. Which I think culturally for us as Latinas, as Dominican, there's this idea that, yeah, you're the mother. You're here for your kids. That's in a good I'm the guy for my kids. You know? And it's like, no. <laughs> I still got a couple of decades left on this earth. Yo te no. There has to be a balance of, you know, 
giving into pouring into yourself. And I literally tell my mom because my mom's like, mis hijos son todo que te lo otro. I'm like, yeah, my kid is everything, but also I love me. Yes. And I'm allowed to do that. That doesn't take away for, from the love that I have for my child. Of course. So even with single motherhood, it's like, if they're not looking at you like, oh, tú te vas a casar de nuevo. It'll be like, oh, tú estás saliendo como... Exactly. And the diablo. So how am I supposed to find a man? Lo que fe no te hace rolo. I can't. Amazon and what's on an order one? Like, may lord a man. You know, like... I want a six foot tall, chocolatey skin. It's, it's just, it's weird. It's a weird position to be in, and I'm sure any any mother listening to this can understand, and even fathers. But I feel like more for women, we're the ones that take the toll. We off. take the burden. The I mean, there are dads that I have that are yeah. audience members that are twenty four seven dads, and the mom, which is rare. Mm-hmm. The mom is like the weekend mom, but for the most part, I'm not discounting their experiences. Yeah. But for the most part, um, it's co parenting, but the child is living. Almost a hundred percent, but not even co parenting. Eighty percent, seventy five percent of the time. In marriages, in relationships, the mother tends to in in you know the norm. I want to say mm-hmm. the majority is the mother who kind of loses her sense of self and identity and identity, and it's like all of a sudden now you're just a mom. Mm-hmm. You're just this caretaker, and it's like no, but like I want to go out and do this. I had gone to a holiday party for the agency that represents me, right? Mm-hmm. And somebody there had just had a baby. And she turned up. Homegirl was drinking. And at the end of the night, she's like, I'm not a good mom. I'm the drunk. Guilt. And I'm oh like, God. listen, you are allowed. Your, your child is at home with your husband. He is safe. He's with daddy. He's good. He, and also, he's 10 months. Que sabe? You know? I'm like, you're allowed to do this. You're mm-hmm. allowed to go out and have a good time. And it's that feeling, that mom guilt that we're made to feel because as mothers, we're not supposed to have any other identity other than mother. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, I'm an artist. Like, since we were talking about earlier about how we like shows, there's a big Basquiat show happening in April. We got tickets already for me and my man to go see it. Mm-hmm. Just believe I'm going to get the sitter. We're going to be out. We're going to have a cute lunch. And like, you know, this, this, this idea that we've been sold, okay, once you, you have a La kid. Madre of Negada, Santa, Santa, uh, Amy, the Washington Knights. No. No. I'm going to go and do what I want to do. <laughs> I'm going to have. But we, talk, we talked about this. I talked with Griselda from Brujas of Brooklyn. We talked about um the episode is Central Motherhood. But we talked about that. Like, there's no way that you can. She, she oh my gosh, she gave this analogy of when the air mask comes down in the airplane. You have to put your air mask on first. Mm-hmm. There's no way that you're gonna save your baby if you're if you're, you know, not functioning because you're not getting oxygen. So it's the same thing with motherhood. Like we need to pour into ourselves first before we are able to be good mothers. I cannot be a mm-hmm. good mom if I feel depleted, if I feel tired, if I'm at my lowest. I cannot. Yeah, it doesn't function that way. One time I was having a conversation with um, just a random stranger, this older black man, and we got into talking about kids and he's like, yeah, I have a nine year old and a 17 year old. And I was like, Oh, how is it raising the 17 year old? He goes, I don't know. I've never raised one before. And I was like, Holy crap. And it, it just made me reflect on the idea that we are adults. Yes. And we are parents, but there's growth in parenting. Mm-hmm. And every year that your child gets older, there's new challenges. Yep. And you're kind of learning as you go. You don't have everything figured out because mm-hmm. you're also growing. I'm going to be 40. Like, that's a whole new chapter that I've never been a part of. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I'm about to have a 13-year-old. I've never had it. I definitely have a teenager. now. She's acting like it. But I've never had a 13-year-old. And just kind of giving yourself the space and the... The grace. The grace to just kind of not have it all figured out. And that's okay. And that's okay. But it's like it, society pushes this thing of like, yeah, you're a mother. You gotta have the breakfast done. And you gotta have this, and if you don't do it, you're a terrible mom. And it's like, no, fuck that. I mean, I've, I've worked a lot on the guilt part. Um, you know, like I already told you, the alien has like that food aversions and stuff like that. So, you know, I make him his lunches, and and he has little thermos that he goes to school like a little construction worker with a whole <laughs> rice beans and chicken in his little thermos, but. There's days that I, I can't cook and I just 
buy food or, or send them to school and nothing. And, and I have to fight myself because I feel guilty. Like, I'm, oh, my God, what is my child going to eat? He's mm-hmm. going to start. Mind you, he figures it out. Like, he finds something that he could eat at the school. But it's like fighting that guilt. And then I know that he doesn't think I'm a bad mom because I, I didn't send him lunch that day. You know what I'm saying? Your so, inner voice is, like, making it worse than what it is. Yeah. Because that mom guilt is real. <sighs> Yeah, it's something that we have to work on, and I feel like I the, through the through the show, I, I I wanna I wanna make it okay for moms to just be women. We're not here just to be a mom. Like yeah. you said, I love the fact that you said that you are an artist. That's one of your identities. I saw a TikTok that really kind of resonated with me. N- not because um, I've been raising my child by myself all this time, but for married couples and people who are partnered uh, with kids this woman said something and I was like, holy crap. She goes, um, the fact that my husband doesn't have to ask for permission to go out, like doesn't have to ask to have the kids watched. He can go out to play a basketball game. He can go take the car to the car wash. And she has to be like, honey, can you watch the kid? And I was like, holy crap. That's so true. By default, it's like, those are yours. You know, like the idea of dad saying, oh, I'm babysitting the kids. Babysitting, They're that's your, your whole child. You're, you're home with your kids. So, you know, it, it's it's crazy. It's Motherhood is a wild ride. And, mother, you know, being a mother and then dating is a whole other experience. With its good things, with its, you know, bad things. But an experience nonetheless. Wait, I want to I wanna share with you. Um, I think you remember, uh, there was a guy from around the way that I was talking to. He used to work at the sneaker store. That I was talking to, remember mm-hmm. when I was doing my my masters, and um, he was dating me. We went on a couple of dates, and um, one day he's like, "Oh, can I come over?" And I was like, mm, "I don't know, my son's here," and whatever. He ended up coming over because he knew him because I used to go to the sneaker store to buy him sh- shoes, whatever. Mm-hmm. So he comes over, and um, Aiden being in the so to sit with me. So Aiden's sitting next to me, and then he puts his feet on his on this that uh, this dude's legs, you know, same thing. But then instead of taking the feet off gently, he starts rubbing his feet. That thing gave me such a like ache. I was like, Aiden, go to your room. Right, so I kicked Aiden out, and then like I that was like a guy I actually ghosted, and like to this day legit like guys i'm not i'm not the best person but legit to this we day all make mistakes but to this day like i'll see him in the street and i'll like turn the corner and go the other way yeah that was weird right that would have how old was it was like five yeah no, don't touch me. i was like what you know back in why i'm also big on my child having autonomy you know, in our culture, babe, that's mm-hmm. that don't mess up the deal. I don't sit on your deal's lap. Good, good. Give your tia a hug. Mm-hmm. I don't do any of that with my daughter. Right now. She's like, say what up. You know? Mm-hmm. None of that. I could go sit on nobody's. Mm-hmm. I have this one godfather who's one of those that likes to pinch and this and the third. And he'll call randomly and be like, you know, niña. Ah, I want to see her. I'm your goddaughter. You you want to see me? Why, why are you? That's why are you so pressed about my kid? Oh, I want to go squeeze her cheeks. No, 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 no. Don't be touching touch my child. child. Don't touch my kid with your crummy hands. Because growing up, we didn't have a lot of autonomy about yeah, what we do with how we look or, or anything. You know, like my kid has certain things uh, aesthetically that she's very particular about. You know, mm-hmm. like in 2020, I, I cut her hair. You remember her hair was yeah. down to her back. She's like, I want short hair. And I cut it to the shoulders. And of course, I got the comments of like, Ay, pero su pelo. I'm like, it's hair. It, grows, it back. grows back. We cut it again. Now it's growing back again. She has like my hair right now, but shorter. Right? Yeah. Like, and now she's bangs. wearing it straight. Mm-hmm. Like she wore it curly on her leg. You want to blow in your hair? Let's blow it out. You want to color your hair? Let's color it. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, there's so much stigma that was put on us about how we looked and being a good person. I'm like, but half of y'all be in the church. And be all serious, but I know the family secrets. I know the dark stuff. Molesting children. Literally. And, but you're worried about my kid having a mullet or, or the, dressing a certain way? The the fact that, and, and I know we, we come from like similar um backgrounds, because um, not all the men are the same, obviously, but like 
did you ever have somebody, a man, coming to your house and like, oh no, come at the chore because they didn't yep. be fulano de tal la casa? Mm-hmm. Why? Yeah. It, it's and it's a it's a very common thing in the Latino community and the POC community, from what I've seen online and heard from other people. That idea that you have to like basically follow all these rules and these things for the sake of other people, not for your own. You can't be comfortable. Mm-hmm. Because Fulano, this and that. Mm-hmm. And my mother's learned throughout the years that I don't play that with my kid. Like, no. Don't tell her this. Don't tell her that. Like, if she wants to express herself, you know, my kid's pretty alternative. Like, it, it changes every day because <laughs> she's teenage. One day she's like Kawhi, the next day she's like golf. And... <laughs> I'm okay, whatever. I feel like we need to make a new, a new, a new category for KJ and just be like, Kawaii cost. <laughs> no, now now her aesthetic is kind of like baggy cargo short skater dude type. Yeah, I saw of. that. I'm like, okay, whatever. But well, she looks good in everything, which is weird. But at the end of the day, it's her. And something that I've in the last couple of conversations I've had with friends about kids and this idea that you have to have kids. Like I had an aunt telling me, "Oh, but you need to have another one." I'm like, why? Because, because. Because it's good. I'm like, it's good because... Okay, cuando tú te vieja, when you're old. I'm and like, kids are not an investment that you need to be waiting for a return. They are human beings. That idea of... I'm going to so have kids so when I'm older. I'm going to when I'm older, they take care of me. One, you're not guaranteed. You could have 10 kids and the 10 kids can do whatever they want. Yes. You know? So it's like that idea of I have to have a kid because I'm going to turn old. No, I'm not having my kid for her to take care of me. Do you want your kids to be in your life? Yes. That's, you know, that you just don't know how the future is going to be. You're going to have the relationship you're going to have with your kid because at the end of the day, they're a free thinking human being with their own character traits and ideas. And you guys, something I'm learning now the last couple of years of raising a child is that once your kids get to like middle school age and they start to solidify who they are, Mm -hmm. sometimes you don't mix. Yes. You know, my kid is a whole new different generation and I've, I've already done the, the process of kind of mourning the little kid that used to be like obsessed with me and yes. now I'm like I have this like super woke kid who is very strong in her opinions who calls out her white friends who are using uh, uh, Ebonics or African American uh, AAV yeah she'd be like yeah that's racist you can't say that and she's very <laughs> you know she's very strong in who she is and I'm like holy crap and she'll do things I'm uh, like, mom you did a great job duh I'm going to talk about a little taboo topic here. Not liking your kids sometimes. Yeah. Which we're not allowed because we're supposed to love their lives. No. Lives. But sometimes I'm like, you know what I'm saying? But I also have to say with the fact that here is this person, this human being who is free to think as she pleases because she's it. she is who she is. Yeah. And I have to realize that. Do we have to get along? Yes. Am I going to agree with everything my kid's going to do in their no. life? No. But that's okay. As you long have as she's to not around the criminal, time, murdering anybody. Listen, you're safe and you're a good person. That's all that matters. Am I gonna like? Do I like her taste of music? No. She put up a, a song and it was in Russian. This was like a couple of months ago. <laughs> it was like an alt rock. She's thing. getting ready. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I really like them. They're political and I'm like, but it's in Russian. She's like, on YouTube they have the subtitle. I'm like, what is going cool? <laughs> I'm here listening to Bad Bunny and my kids over here listening to some Russian couple. Work out. <laughs> but that's okay, you know? That's who she is. Yeah. She is a creative. She's quirky. She's weird. She's very strong. She's very much Capricorn. We were talking about that. She's like, when I get money, I'm going to save something. I'm going to invest the rest. I was like, you're such, such a Capricorn. <laughs> oh, my God. She was like, Mom. So I told her about a big job that I have. Yeah. Right? And if it pulls through, it's like a lot of cash. She's like, are you going to invest some of that money, Mom? What are we doing? Do you want me to, like, make a list of how you should spend the money? Are we going to invest in NFTs? (laughs) All right. NFT. What? (laughs) So that's another topic for another thing. But NFTs, I'm still, like, trying to understand, like, what is the concept of that? But just, like, seeing her unfold into this human, both the good and the bad. Yeah. But sometimes I'm like, get on my room. What the hell do you have? But it's just like acknowledging and giving her the space to be her. Yeah. It's a trip. It's a journey. But it should be allowed, you know? Yeah. 
it shouldn't be it shouldn't be that you're just like dictating who your child is going to be yeah like so so i was having a thought the other day and um we we talk about this a lot because like because i am artistic i was just thinking kind of like kind of like that shoulda coulda woulda thing like yo had i been allowed to be artistic like this that i'm birthing now not saying that i would have had a podcast beforehand but it could have been i would have gotten into a completely different major because like i went into i went into business because i wanted to make money right epic fail because i cannot march to the beat of anybody's drum i legit detest <laughs> being micromanaged like don't fucking come over here checking what I'm doing if I'm selling or not, whatever, fuck that, right? So then, then I went to education, which is kind of corporate, but not really, because I have a little bit more autonomy in the sense of, like, the way that I teach and, like, mm-hmm. the things that I do. But, like, I was just, like, if I had just been allowed to explore without a pressure um, artistically, like, who would I be? And of course, guys, you know, New York City, Washington Heights is crazy over here. But um, yeah, like it's it's nuts. Like I love the fact that you're you're raising KJ like that and that you're letting her be her own person and explore who she is and not like judging and being like, no, but I don't say that cosa así. <sighs> wow, we talked about a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so advice that I that uh, um that I gathered is like kind of be conscious of who you are right and um take it take accountability and and put in the work when you're in a relationship because it's not just going to happen automatically um you told us one of our your hard dating stories um guys i'm looking through my questions um uh, okay um tell tell us about your art like what 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 is the goal of your art because right now it's like it's kind of niche, like, you know, nail art, but like, I love the fact that you, you have, most of your pieces have a message Mm -hmm. or like, like, let's say, like, for example, when I used to go do my nails with you, I used to be like, well, today I want to do this. What do you think about that? And I loved being able to just kind of like give you an idea and for you to run with it. So like, talk a little bit about that. Cause I, I, I legit, like, I know you're not doing nails anymore <laughs> hashtag things that make me sad I'm but sorry. she's doing press on so um what mm-hmm. what is the goal so the last two years have been weird both good and bad I think for everybody but for myself you know when everything shut down my clients were like hold up what do you mean i can't do my nails so i start i saw other people doing press ons and so i i spoke to my clients i'm like i can send you press ons and a lot of them were either like no nah, just like walk around like a bald fatty <laughs> uh, with no nails and others, you know, took to it. So then I started like an Etsy shop and it allowed me to make income without having to expose myself. Cause mm-hmm. then also the agency side, like photo shoots and stuff that shut down mm-hmm. and that's my main source of income. So it, it forced me to kind of shift everything and it was successful. Like I did really good. And then things reopened and, you know, we went through that thing of like cases went up, went down and, Doing nails, especially the level of work that I do, you're sitting there for a couple hours. Yeah. You know? Especially if it's super intricate, we're going to be there two, three hours. And I just didn't feel comfortable exposing myself like mm-hmm. that. Um, and I really enjoyed just working. Like, I, I sit in my little office space. Mm-hmm. I do my orders. Like, literally, when I leave here, I'm running home to work. I have a gazillion orders to do. Um, and I enjoy it. But it's also forced me to rethink my career and where I want to go. Mm-hmm. Um, just a couple of months ago, after the um, Omarium, like I love to call it, uh, <laughs> surge, I closed off my books for good. Like I guess I'm retiring, you could say. In that aspect, I am building another aspect, uh, still working in nails, but more in education. And that'll be something that I'll talk about in a couple of months. But I'm working on that. But as far as my art, the way I look at it now, I think I've done things for the sake of money and the sake of just being out there. And now I want to pour into me as the artist. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I did a shoot with two of my agency mates, a makeup artist and a wonderful uh, Cuban photographer. 
and we did this dope art inspired um nail shoot it was like crazy like oh it just looks so good like <laughs> i'm so excited for these things to come out but given that space to kind of be creative yeah and it really being about the nails Friends have sparked this, sparked this idea of, I want to pour into myself as, as an artist. Like, I was telling Vanessa, the photographer yesterday, I published the book in 2015. Yeah. When I initially uh, approached Penguin House, Penguin Random House, the publishing company, about it, I wanted to do, like, a coffee table book mm-hmm. with sick, crazy nails. Mm-hmm. But they're a company, they want to make money, they're like, no, how-to books are the thing. And I did it, but it wasn't, I don't feel like it did as well as it should have because I wasn't fully into it. That wasn't my creative Mm -hmm. vision. So now I'm like, no, I'm pouring into Amy, the artist. I'm doing what I want. I'm working on the projects I want to, you know? Like, I got approached for a magazine shoot in a couple of weeks, and it's this cool, like, prom Y2K concept. And I was like, oh, I have a chance to do it. Like, like, that's right up my alley. I went through Y2K. And I'm like, that could be some like really sick nails. But then, you know, I'm telling my agent who I love that she definitely fights for me. I was like, I'm not going to do it if I can't get an assistant because I want to do crazy nails. And it's like, I don't know, 20 talent, like a crazy number. And just really like standing strong in who I am creatively. Mm -hmm. And for 10 years, I've dedicated myself to providing you know, my clients' ideas, mm-hmm. what they want. And now I'm, I'm like, no, I want to do what I want. Mm-hmm. I'm on my bad bunny job. Yes. Right? So, you know, my future is looking more into really pouring into myself as an artist and doing the projects that I want. Mm-hmm. And when I do do projects with companies like this one that I'm hoping I get, I'll be able to share with you once it's like, you know. Seven five. Even doing stuff like that, being more outspoken in what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Like, this is my style. This is how I do it. And just, like, putting the work that I want to put out. Mm-hmm. Like, I've worked for everybody else. and I've done what everybody else wants. But now, like, me, me, you. Yay! Yeah. I love it. So I'm excited. Uh, one last question. Hmm. If you could go back in time and tell your 10-year-old self anything, what would you tell her? Mm. That's a beautiful question. Let me think. Mm. Okay. I think I would tell my 10 year old self not to doubt my creativity. Yeah. Because that's something that I've learned and I'm still learning to kind of like that little critic in my head oh i was just talking about my, my boyfriend this yesterday I, i'm working on a set um it's a gift from one author to another so it's um the author's uh his artwork from his book yeah it's a graphic novel and i did this one scene in the book and it's like nighttime it's a boat there's like two kids on a boat and you see the moon and everything and i did it and, and i'm like holy crap i'm good and the fact that I say that, it shows that I doubt myself before yeah. I do something. And then I call it my Sasha Fierce. I black out. I create something. And then afterwards, I'm like, holy crap, I did that. So telling my 10-year-old self to not doubt, don't listen to that little voice. Yes. Because I feel like that hinders me and it sabotages me a lot. Yeah. And that's why this year I really want to dedicate to pouring into myself as an artist. Mm-hmm. And basically telling that little voice, I said, hold on, you know? Yeah. Like battling the imposter syndrome. Because yeah. I feel like we all, as people of color, we go through that a lot. It's like, you know, we get to the spaces and we're just like wondering, like, do I belong here? Mm-hmm. Am I supposed to be here? Am I good enough? You know, it's all it's all those little um, negative self-talk. And it's not even something that we do like, I'm shit on myself all the time. No, it's just like, it's learned behavior. Yeah. So like doing the work to unlearn that. Yeah, and it's tough. It's hard because... I think one of the toughest relationships you'll have in your lifetime is the relationship with yourself. Yes. It is the most abusive one and you don't even notice oh it. Oh my God. Yes. Like sometimes I hear like people talking and, and this is like a sidebar. Um, there's certain people in my life that I love that I hear them talking about themselves and I'm like, why are you so mean to yourself? Mm-hmm. You know? And then the thing is like, they talk about like you grew up with these people and you hear them talk like that about themselves. And it's like, 
you know, a lot of the time when you listen to your own inner voice, because you've been around that person a lot, you sound just like that. Yep. So it's like, you know, do a battle of like unlearning that behavior and loving yourself, like really, really loving yourself and wholeheartedly and believing in yourself. Because like, if you don't believe in yourself, who's going to believe in you? Honestly. Yeah. But with that, comadres, we're going to end the episode. This is being filmed during Women's History Month. And I'm so glad that I brought a badass artist woman that I love on the show to share with you guys. So, you know the deal. Follow me at Comadre on the Pod and follow Ami on Amy V Nails on all platforms and my website, Amy V Nails. Yes, and I'm going to put the link for her book, and then when she has that coffee tail book book out, which we're manifesting that, yes. um, I will put that in the show notes as well. Um, remember, if you have any questions, feel free to send me a comadregram at comadreando at esc.network.com or slide up into my DMs. Um, <laughs> Um, if you want to help with the sustainability of Comadriando, please make sure to become a Patreon or send me some gifts for coffee and things like that. Um, 